if the dealership sells my vehicle without what? disclosing it to the buyer and then now doesn't want to release funds because of their error, that has nothing to do with it. That you're having problems selling your Lambo. It's a whole deal now. No, no problem selling it. It's sold. Yeah, yeah. I know it's yeah. sold, but you're having problems getting paid for it, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, you just the story to catch everyone up to speed. Uh, you bought a 2020 Huracan Evo twin turbo car mm -hmm. dang near two years ago. I bought it off of one of our friends. Yep. Yeah, two years ago is when you bought the car, like yeah. a while back. And then you've had the car for a little bit, and then you went to sell it, and you consigned it at this dealership. We're going to keep nameless. Yeah. And uh, they've had it for, shoot, months. I mean, it's since been- Since July. Since July, okay. Yeah. So we are in February 2024. This is July 2023 is when they yeah. first had the car in consignment. They had it there. They it's an expensive car, so it, it's not expected to sell right away, especially not in today's car market. So, right, if a dealership can't sell a car, I have nothing against them when it comes down to that. So it's but, understandable. It yeah. took six months. I noticed when they were listing the car for sale, they used it for marketing like nobody's business. They're still running ads with the pictures of the car of on there. In between this period of this last time and actually selling, it sold previously, huh. right? Yeah. And it sold, now the story that I know is it sold previously. The car got shipped to its potential new owner in Oregon, Washington. I think it was Oregon. Oregon. Okay. Yeah. The guy had the car in Oregon, found out that, hey, there was repairs on the car or something he didn't want. No, I, I think it was that, like, he didn't get approved or something oh, like that. Oh, that is right. That's yeah. right. Like, yeah. he didn't get approved and it was sent. And then, like, when... I went to go ask for my car back because I originally did. This is even, again, before this this whole ordeal was with another car dealership. I then found out that he put like over 500 miles on the car. The, I had P0s on it, if I'm not no, mistaken. No, no, you had R888s. R888s. And they, R888s. And and they then, swapped it with new tires. Yeah, you. so new tires, um, which is just insane to me where maybe I'm just like, I'm that old-fashioned. But... With the car dealerships that we've been a part of, with the car dealerships that I know and how they run, when a car is sold or a car is even potentially being sold, I've always been kept up to date of like, hey, we might be closing on this car. Just wanted to let you know, right? And then if it closes, who wouldn't, like, why wouldn't you call the person that owns the car? Like, dude, we just sold your car. And if any issues come up about like, hey, they might want some credit or they might want this or to close the deal, like this is all we need to do for them, then sure, keep me in the loop, right? For sure. But to not notify the owner of the vehicle that their car was sold, so not only did it happen to me once, but then when I took my car back, I was pissed already with that dealership. I kept the car for a little bit. This dealership reached out to me, uh, actually reached out to one of our guys, Jake, and said, hey, I think I could sell your car in less than a week. Of course, high expectation, <laughs> sure, right? It's fine. Um, it, it got us interested to sell the car with them on consignment. Mm -hmm. Then fast forward to December from July to December. I think it was July 11th uh, all the way to December 14th. That's when the car officially sold. I was on the, uh, I was actually in the car with you where I, I called... Uh, my point of contact at this dealership, which is a I couple think weeks ago, one three of, weeks ago. Yeah, three, four weeks. Ago. It was a little bit uh, first week past, of July. past January after your birthday, after my birthday. Yep. Um, I called and I was like, hey, why am I getting sent pictures of my Lamborghini in different parts of Arizona? Did my car sell? Like, oh, yeah, like your, your car did sell. And at that <laughs> point, it's just like, holy crap, it's happening again. Yeah. Like the whole thing of. They released liability. That was my one thing I asked for. I was like, hey, please do not release liability or, or release just the, the keys of my vehicle, possession of my vehicle to anyone else. During the meantime, I asked them also. I was a little bit more careful because now, again, I felt like I got uh, taken advantage time. of the first time. Now, the second time, I was a little bit more calculated. I asked them, I was like, hey, I'm paying you know a certain amount of dollars, a couple hundred dollars a month for insurance. You have it in your floor room. If it's not going to be driven, should I still maintain my insurance? Like, yes, you, you know, our managers um, recommend for you to keep it. So I'm still incurring an expense. I own the car outright, so right. I have no monthly payment, but I have, I bought the car for $300,000. So I have $300,000 worth of money or for whatever it is that it sells for to be sold. So that's originally what I asked for my car to be sold when it comes down to the contract that I signed of what I agreed on on paper, it's $300,000. Fast forward to December 14th, 2023, my car sold. It got posted on their story, which I later came to find yeah. out. 
that it officially sold, I was never notified. I got sent by a number of people that follow me, one of them being my friend of like, hey, congratulations on your Lambo being sold. And I was like, that's funny. They haven't contacted me. That's what I, I said, I'll believe it when they send me my check, right? right? Just like anything, right? especially with dealing with that larger dollar amount. It's never closed until you get paid. Um, it's like a house flip. Yeah. <laughs> Or, or you're under contract. Under contract. Yeah. You're not, you're not, uh, it's not done until that wire hits. But I think that's also another thing that people don't understand is that there's some people when I be, uh, began to post videos about this on Instagram and on TikTok, they're like, oh, maybe because of the dollar amount that it is, it takes certain amount of days for funding, like when it comes down to a property. No. Like I owned <laughs> this car yeah. outright. Um, the, the, the buyer ended up getting approved. I think he financed it. And he got approved right away. When I spoke to the the guy that's my point of contact at this dealership, he told me that they received funding. And this is just when I really began to get a really sour taste in my mouth and when the red flags started coming out. For sure. And this is not the only, this is the first time I've heard of this dealership or any dealerships in Arizona of this happening, but there's a really famous dealership yeah. like two or three years ago uh, called CNC Motor Cars, and there's a Heard huge scandal. Yeah. Um, and I, I went there before because I went to a car rally. A huge dealership. We hosted it there. Yeah. Biggest dealership I've ever. Been. It's the size yeah. of IKEA. It was huge. Yeah. And um, that was happening all the time. They would sell cars on consignment, and the funds would just be like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna get you the funds," and it keeps keeps going and yeah. going and going. Well, that's yeah. what I wanted to explain because I don't think people understand what on consignment means. Right. Um, and this is this is more of a common practice with more expensive vehicles because when it's a lower end vehicle, you kind of just, not just like anything, you, you, just, you post it on offer up, you right. post it on Facebook marketplace, car gurus on consignment is obviously when it comes down to like a higher tier vehicle, you can put your car for sale on consignment through a dealership, which just means that like they ask you what you want it for. You give them possession. I guess you don't technically have to. I've done on consignment where I don't give them possession of my vehicle. They just post it on their site, but they said that they wanted it in their showroom, that they agreed with me that they weren't going to give possession of my vehicle. So to me, it's like, okay, it's an established dealership in Arizona. They look like they've sold expensive cars before and we're signing an agreement. Right. And they understand my concerns. So I had full confidence that they were going to look out for my best interests, especially when I told them. I literally told the guy, this just happened to me with the previous dealership. I don't want to deal with this again. 100%. And the idea behind on consignment is I own the vehicle outright. Even if let's say that I did have a loan, the idea behind it is that this dealership takes possession of my vehicle and the right to sell the vehicle at whatever desired price we agreed on. For me, it was 300000 So let's say that they end up selling it for 325000 Well, my agreed price was 300000 So therefore, they get to pocket the difference without having to take on any actual money invested but they just did the marketing behind it. They have maybe the buyer pool. They make the commission. They, they make their commission or consignment fee, right? Um, there's some dealerships that have offered me to do a consignment for free or just for the rate. exposure or a flat rate. Uh, they can do a percent. I know LAC uh, does like uh, percents quite often. Right. Um, it, it's all, you know, based off of what the dealership wants to do. This dealership reached out to me to one of our guys, yeah. they offered to sell my car. And that was the big thing where like, when it came down to talking about the numbers and what they wanted me to settle at, I was like, when did I ever agree to pay a $25,000 consignment fee for the sale of my vehicle? Like we're literally talking about nearly 10% for a, you know, nearly $300,000 vehicle. I would have, I would have right. never agreed to that because it just doesn't make sense. So you consigned it at 300, they had it for 329, right? Or something like that. I don't Some, know what they had it then at. Then it's like 319, 309, 300, 290, sure. 285. Guy buys it for 285 and he has a car and now they've just been holding on to the funds yeah. essentially for six weeks with little to no so communication. I, I wanna explain that. Now, um, the communication actually started um, after that date because I would always follow up and my point of contact of one of the sales reps who no longer works there anymore and also the manager of this dealership, I would message them maybe once if not every other week because at this point I was debating, do I want my car back? I can film content with it um, or I just want it back in my possession since they weren't moving the vehicle. I would follow up with them every week, every other week, and they would tell me like, oh, we have some activity, but we're, we're going to see if we can get it done. 
the two weeks passed by from my previous point of contact. And then, yes, he finally said that we officially did sell it. The part where things really began to get shady was at that moment when I found out that the car did get sold. They released liability of the car. And the best way that I can put it is that's when I started to catch this guy in little white lies. When he told me that the car sold a few days before New Year's and the buyer of the vehicle messaged me via Instagram and told me he bought it December 14th. Two weeks off, guy. Two weeks. Yeah. Uh, there's no way you are not aware of the most expensive vehicle in your dealership and when it's sold. I'm reaching out to your sales reps every week. I'm sure I'm probably annoying to some point, but it's a lot of money to me. Maybe not to them. Maybe, you know, they're okay with just sitting or not having $285,000. I'm already taking a loss. It's a loss for me already. I just want my money back so I can continue to invest it or do whatever it is that I want with it. But at this point, now when I come to find out that my vehicle has been sold, this is when things really begin to get tricky. So when I dropped off my vehicle, it's a twin turbo Lamborghini Evo. I dropped it off explaining to them, my rear view camera does not work. I explained it to the sales rep. They end up backing up the vehicle into their showroom, not me. So they had to be aware that the camera did not work. For sure. You I've, told them the camera didn't work. I and I, and, I, and I bought the car that way. To me, it does not matter. I have yeah. uh, like, when it comes down to that type of tier supercar, I'm sure some people are a little bit more meticulous, right? Person to person. For me, I could care less. To the way that this per, this uh, sales rep explained it is that if the camera did not work, they were going to cancel the deal. And I said, okay, cancel it. I will take my car back. Worst comes to worst, I'll take my car back. I, I, I do not care enough. They're like, no, well, we want to make the deal happen. Supposedly, they said that they've taken this whole time where he first told me that it was going to cost them about two to three grand to get that rear view camera to work. So the idea behind it is that it has a twin turbo kit. And the way that it was explained to me is it burned the wiring Correct. of the rear view camera. And that was explained to me by the person I bought it from. I said, okay, I don't care for the rear view camera. I purchased that anyways. To me, it's not a make it or break it of like, hey, this thing has like a check engine light or, or something is off about the performance of the vehicle. It's a rear view camera. It's not a stock car. If it was a stock car and it didn't function, this car has almost $50,000 in mods into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's a it's twin a turbo, 1,000 horsepower, horsepower car. It's not, yeah. you, you, it's, if you put a new camera on it, but it's going to... I don't want to speak for the buyer. Right. If the buyer has a preference of needing a rear view camera, he should. I disclosed it to the dealership. That right. is my job. If the dealership sells my vehicle without what? disclosing it to the buyer and then now doesn't want to release funds because of their error... That has nothing to do with me. Exactly now right. they're making me sit on my hands, wait for my funds for an error that they caused, and they are pointing the finger at me of like, well, we want this to go through, but now it's costing us money because your vehicle doesn't work. I was like, then give me back my vehicle. It, it literally came down to that where I would rather just have my vehicle back with all the added miles and wear and tear that this guy did for the, for the few days that he had it. A few weeks now at this point. Well, yeah, it's been going from they, shop to shop. They yeah. don't they don't want to give it back because the, the loan has already gone through for this guy. This guy already owns it now. Mm -hmm. They'd have to purchase it back from him. But the thing is, he purchased a car without the disclosure of, hey, these things might not work, this and that. And then if you bought the car, say the person who bought the car doesn't know who you are, obviously. Yeah. Doesn't know the history, the ownership, doesn't know any of that crap. All he knows is he's, he worked his ass off to buy a thousand horsepower Lamborghini. Of course. For 285000 if I bought one, I wanted to make sure it's freaking perfect. Yeah. And it's a dealership's responsibility to make sure, like, yo, backup camera not working. What's the deal? Just like, disclose it. Or, or, or work with me here. Or give okay. me some money off. You know what I mean? And and conversate with me. Make or, me aware yeah. of the transaction and be like, hey, um, we're going to have to take off $5,000 and this deal, you know, will go through with Is that. Is it thumbs up? For you good? Are you good for yeah. 5000 or not? Or right. not the whole idea of... No, we sold it. We're going to try to figure this out. And if not, we're just going to then take the car back and then cancel it. Because then at that point, my car's therefore been driven. There's wear and tear. It's been messed with. And then now I'm still left with the without my money, without my car, at this buyer's discretion because of the dealership's mistake. Absolutely. So it, it should have been very easy. Any dealership 
I don't care if a wheel is missing. If I agreed to buy that car and I'm aware that the wheel is missing, that is on me, right? It should For have sure. just been disclosed. But if it wasn't disclosed, to so the way that this buyer made it seem, he's like, oh man, I wish the camera had worked. And I said, to me, I truly didn't care. I can show the messages. I was straight up with him. I was like, I have many supercars. Some of them have not worked when it comes down to the review camera. You know, they're fidgety when it comes down to the special McLaren's. I was like, I didn't care enough. He's yeah. like, he's like, no, yeah, you're right. He made it seem like he didn't care. Again, his his um, conversation could have been completely different with the dealership, sure. but that is not my fault. Why <laughs> am I missing now on my two hundred and eighty five thousand dollars for nearly two months because of someone else's mistake? Right now, I can't even take possession back of my vehicle, which is the craziest thing. What I think is funny in all of this, in the between that time, right? You swapped wheels. I had a set of wheels <laughs> that that um, the red wheels the that were red on the wheels, Lamborghini. They're 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 custom wheels done for Lamborghini. They're nearly twenty thousand dollar retail, and uh, they have really great tires on them. And I put them on your car to help sell the wheels and to help sell your car. It was a perfect relationship. It was uh, now we both it got was great, and we both got screwed. <laughs> so after you get your money, I'm gonna make another video saying. Rick won't give me my money for the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It, it, so now you're at the point of waiting to see if they're going to be able to release the funds to get it back. I'm having a conversation with him literally right now. I mean, he has 10 minutes to send me the wire for it to clear today. Uh, because if not, then tomorrow they, you can't send a wire because banks are closed it's Saturday. So, um, at that point, it's just it's cutting it close, man. Yeah. Um, at that point, he's just going to have to deal with my attorney. Cause again, when, when really looking at it, he sent me a message and saying like, this is how I want to wrap it up. Um, he said that it's like, I want to make things right. Um, I want everyone to be happy. I was like, dude, that ship has sailed. I was like, I'm not going to make this personal. I was like, I'm already taking a loss on the vehicle. That's on me, right? Sure. M car right. market has been pretty shitty. That, that's my fault. It happens. I'm just trying to mitigate my loss and I'm trying to get my money back so I can use my funds however I see to be fit. I'm out $285,000. That is, that is a huge amount of money. For anyone. For anyone, yet alone myself. With that being said, when I spoke to my attorney, she made it very clear that not only can we be asking the, for the full sell price, but because from the date that it's sold of not being paid, I can get interest. I can work towards being uh, compensated for uh, cancel fees and uh, penalties, whatever the case might be. So when it comes down to like trying to nickel and dime me for like the sell price of this vehicle or, or trying to like, oh, I want everyone to be happy, dude. How would anyone feel not being paid, let's say even a small amount, yet alone over a quarter of a million dollars? And you want everyone to be happy? Like that ship has been completely sailed. If you look at the comments from when I originally started making, um, bringing people aware of what was going on, I feel like someone's natural reaction would have instantly have been, this is the dealership that is screwing me. They've been messing with me Go for nearly up. two weeks attorneys full blown and I could have done that but I understand business enough that I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt the final 48 hours and give them the time to send me the money and if not then my attorney will take over and there won't be any more point of contact or settling for the full sell price you'll of the never vehicle. talk to them again I, I, at that point it will be settled in court and my biggest suggestion for anyone that ever wants to do on consignment is what I've learned from this experience, I have done many deals on consignment. Make sure that you get everything written in paper. And when it comes down to any price that you agree upon, make sure that it gets written in paper. And any terms that you want to make sure that do or do not happen with your vehicle to get written in paper so it's understood. So if they cross that line, then again, it's written in paper and you can go after them. It is so unfortunate that things like this happen but it's life, right? We've done good deals. We've done bad deals. This is just, I would say, uh, a little hiccup in the road. We're going to get our money one way or another. We're hoping that it's not the whole CNC thing all over again. And I, I don't believe it is. Um, but it's just, I would say from my experience and my loss and my loss of time and loss of opportunity costs, my, that, that has been my biggest takeaway of being more selective of not just being excited that someone is willing to sell your vehicle on consignment, but making sure that you actually trust them and that there's proper paperwork put in place to make sure that you are covered worst case scenario. So what's your plan now? Once you get this money back, 
Are you going to buy something else? Are you going to tr- try to sell your other cars? I know you talked about selling your Ferrari. Yeah. Getting some different. I'm just more house flips, right? Just trying to put um, my money to, at, at this to point, to work. So if it's house flips, if it's investing more, I can't imagine me investing more in long-term positions. Market's very overbought, but it would have been a great thing to have available in December. For sure. Right? Uh, we've missed on on decent amount of opportunity just in the past two months. Um, at this point, now it's just trying to mitigate my loss and trying to wait for the next opportunity to present itself. So if for that's sure. a new car or a plane, whatever the case might be, yeah. I'm always looking for a deal, and I guess that's what I'm going to try to stay patient for. For sure. Yeah, thankfully for you, it's a lot of money, but it's not that much money for you. That's still still a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. But I'm saying, grand scheme of things, I'm glad I'm glad it happened to you and not someone who only <laughs> only had two hundred eighty five thousand uh, dollars. Okay. 